Today is a very sad day because the pump in the AIO of our HTPC has died. So we're gonna take a look at it today. Here it is, it's inside of the Fantex Evolve Shift. Uh, I built this probably two and a half, roughly two and a half years ago. So I'm kind of disappointed that the pump is already dead because we don't even use it every day. So I was just kind of hoping that the pump would last maybe four or five years uh, at the rate that we use it. But this is just the way things go sometimes. Inside we have a Core i5 7600K along with 16 gigs of RAM and a GTX 1070 Ti. Way overkill for an HTPC, but that's because we do some gaming on it as well. And the cooler that we're putting on the spot today is Corsair's H80i V2 120 millimeter liquid AIO. Let me give you guys a closer look at this thing. Easy does it. Face the camera here, don't be shy. Clearly we've got a good looking system here and when the AIO was functional, it performed great. The whole system had no problems whatsoever, never had to deal with any kind of issues. This is really the first big thing that's gone wrong with it. Just to give you an overview of the airflow setup here, we have one 120 millimeter fan at the bottom of the radiator, but the case is elevated. It doesn't look like it's elevated much because these feet, but you probably got maybe an inch or so of clearance uh, between those fan blades and the actual base of the floor. So that's actually not too bad. Temps have always been good in the system while the AIO was working. So the air is gonna go up, it's gonna hit our motherboard area, as well as the GPU, which is in a separate chamber on the back side of the case, which I'll flip around in just a moment. And then we've also got this 140 millimeter fan that's helping eject hot air out the front of the case, uh, not to mention the sort of passive ventilation that we have at the top. This is all ventilated, so hot air can also escape from that way as well. Let's go ahead and turn this sucker on. See what happens. Right off the bat, everything looks normal, but everything doesn't quite sound normal. You can sort of hear, if I get really close with my lav mic, you hear that? Oh, now you can really hear it. Yeah, so that was uh, the first key indicator that something was horribly wrong with something in the system was it, it was an audible cue. I actually heard the pump grinding away three times louder than you hear it now. I've had quite a few pumps die over the years, so I'm pretty familiar with how they sound once they've kicked the bucket. Um, however, that doesn't necessarily mean that your pump isn't dead just because it's not making a sound. We kind of got lucky in this little demo here that it instantly started making this little noise when I, when I turned it on, but there will be times when I turn the system on and the pump's relatively quiet. And the thing is, if your pump ever does die, well, knock on wood, you actually want to hope that it makes an audible or loud enough noise so that you're instantly aware that something's wrong. That's why it's good to periodically check temperatures, which is what we're gonna do right now, just to see how it's behaving. All right, bear in mind that the system is idling. I literally just turned it on maybe a couple minutes ago and our package temps for the 7600K, 65C, 66. That is not normal. 65C on a 76, on pretty much any CPU, under these ambient conditions, this should not be happening. And again, if you're dealing with a dead pump, but it's not making any suspicious noise, then you're not really gonna know about it until you check your temperatures or if you see some like thermal throttling, uh, some performance issues, if your system just starts acting up, um, that's, that's really the only way that you're gonna be able to tell. Conversely, just because your pump is making a loud suspicious noise doesn't necessarily mean that it's dead. For example, you could just be running low on liquid, which is, not quite as common with a closed loop cooler because it's pretty much airtight or it should be anyway from the factory, but there are still instances where evaporation can occur or just small traces of air can creep into the loop over time. And the less water you have in your loop, the less resistance there is for your pump. So your pump ends up spinning a lot faster than it should, which means it could potentially burn out or it might just start making weird noises from coming into contact with air bubbles or the bearings are making a weird noise because they're drier than they should be. There's a lot that could be going on. You definitely don't wanna to jump to conclusions too quickly. One thing I will say, and that's worth checking, is to ensure that the connections are solid. The wiring differs from cooler to cooler. You might just have a single three pin connector that you plug into the CPU fan header, or you might have one of those plus an additional SATA connector or a Molex connector. Whatever the case may be though, you wanna check all of those connections to ensure that they're properly plugged into what they should be and that there's no interference whatsoever. The last thing I would do is double check the mounting of your water block onto the CPU. If somehow that got loose, that could also potentially drive the temperatures up significantly if you know if it's not making proper contact so you know what else we should do we should actually just put the side panel back on the case because that's how it should be operating okay now we'll keep a close eye on our temps see if anything changes and on a side note if you find out that you have low water levels in your closed liquid cooler or your all-in-one liquid cooler and it is not expandable and not refillable you might be sol because there's really no other way that you can safely add more fluid or add more coolant 
to that loop without introducing more air or damaging something in the process. Oh, holy crap, 100C. Oh my God. Oh my God, okay, it's happening. Everybody stay calm. What's the Everybody procedure, everyone? Calm. What's the procedure? Stay Oh! It just shot up like in an instant. There's no background apps. This is definitely this is definitely indicative of some really poor cooling on our CPU because the temperatures of our other devices are totally fine. It's just this. It's just the 7600K, which obviously points to the AIO. Another thing that probably goes without saying is that if your fans are ramping up a lot more than they usually do, they're making a lot more noise than, than they typically should, that could also be an indicator that something in your system isn't being cooled properly. Temperatures are spiking up and the fans need to ramp up faster in order to cool down whatever component may be overheating. So yeah, I mean, hearing or just listening to your system can actually be really helpful to uh, sort of diagnose what's going on, as well as your eyes, right? I mean, user, I mean, you can see right here, the uh, Corsair logo on the AIO is red, which on this model means that the CPU is operating at a high temperature. And if we're not doing anything demanding on the system at that moment, there's definitely something weird going on. Should we try to game on it like this? Yes, actually, I already tried. I, I tried launching Doom and this is how far I got. We got to the photo sensitivity warning screen. We can still move the mouse cursor, but nothing else is working. I can't control shift delete. There's no Alt F4 working. It's pretty much just locked up. I would have loved to show you guys a quick little demo, like seeing the frame rates tank and stuff in game due to thermal throttling, but we didn't even get that far. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna, I'm gonna shut this off because this, this can't be good. We'll put this guy out of his misery here. And once that turns off, I'm gonna install a new cooler. So it's gonna be a temporary cooler. I'm probably gonna order like a, another AIO the same size, uh, probably, probably a different model. But since I actually don't have one on hand right now, I'm gonna use this guy. This is the Dark Flash. I've actually never used this cooler. Dark Flash Shadow. I think they make more like entry level and budget products. This will actually be the first of their products that I ever use. And I did not purchase this cooler specifically for this video. I purchased this, I wanna say like six months to a year ago, maybe more, uh, intended for an AMD build. But lo and behold, when I received it, I realized it's an Intel only cooler. And yeah, it was listed on the product page and everything. I'm just stupid and didn't read. But hey, we get to use it now. Um, it is just short enough to fit inside of the shift. I think the shift clearance is 84 millimeters for CPU height, uh, CPU cooler height. This is like 72, I think. So we're just under. It's a little too close for comfort for my liking. It's going to impede a little bit of airflow, I think. I would not use it as a, a daily solution, but again, this is just temporary, and I'm actually curious to see if the temperatures here, I mean, the temperatures have to be better than 100 degrees with a dead pump AIO. So at the very least, we'll see an improvement there. All right, I'm going to shut up now. Let's pop this guy in. installed and it's you know it's actually not as close to the glass panel as I thought it would be it's kind of hard to tell on camera but there's definitely some clearance there much more than I thought so that's good um, we haven't checked temps yet uh, we'll do that together in just a moment but a really quick one to point out that I did reinstall the radiator fan because we obviously want to keep that airflow going and uh, yeah the whole process probably took roughly 20 maybe 25 minutes um, it took a little bit longer because I did have to remove the graphics card sorry for all the glare maybe I'll just take these panels off really quick so the GTX 1070 Ti was blocking my access to the back of the motherboard where I needed to sort of hold and secure the back plate in order for me to screw in the cooler from the other side. So I had to remove that, that took some time, but overall everything went pretty smoothly and I am pretty excited to check temperatures now. So let me just pop this guy back on. The system's really quiet right now, by the way. I mean, obviously we're just idling, so it shouldn't be loud, but it's, it's definitely nice to see that there's no immediate red flags with our cooler or anything else going on. So let's take a look at our temperature. Temperature, temperature, where's the, where's, where's the thing? Where, where, oh yeah, over here. Okay, let's do it. You know, this TV is 77 inches. It's absolutely massive in person, but whenever I'm filming it, it, it looks pretty small. I think we need a bigger TV. And we are getting much, much better temperatures here. 33C, I will take it. Yes, all the cores are looking good. Oh, thank God. Man, it's actually looking pretty good. Let's uh, let's fire up a game and see how this guy doesn't reload. All right, we fired up Doom. We've been running for about five minutes or so now, but you can see here our temperatures are running in the mid 80s. I mean, it, it's not great, it's not awful. You have to bear in mind this is uh, more or less an entry level slash budget cooler on a relatively 
fast chip. I mean, the 7600K is still no slouch even by today's standards, uh, especially when it's overclocked, which I didn't mention that at the beginning of the video, but we've been running overclocked at 4.8 gigahertz on all cores this entire time. So uh, even more impressive, I guess, for the uh, for the dark shadow, what the hell is it called? The dark flash cooler is actually keeping up pretty well, all things considered. Having said that though, the temperatures are still a little too high for my liking. You can see that we're getting much closer to 90C now, occasionally uh, hitting the low 90s. So yeah, a little bit too warm for me, but that's okay because we just needed something temporary, like I mentioned, to get us up and running. Um, at least we're operational now, we can actually watch Netflix or whatever we can do, you know, all the random streaming stuff. Uh, I just wouldn't game on it until we actually get a better cooler in here. But for now, it's looking good. Apart from that though, if you guys have any liquid AIO woes that you'd like to share, feel free to share with the class down below in the comments. Apart from that, guys, I'm gonna get the heck out of here. Thank you so much for watching the video. Toss a like before you go if you enjoyed it and get subscribed to the channel for more tech stuff coming at you really soon. Also check out our merchandise, bitwit.tech. Unfortunately, our holiday sale is over, but our regular prices year round are still pretty good. So if you find something you like, feel free to pick it up. It's a great way to help support the channel. Thanks again for watching. Have a good one, and I'll see y'all in the next video.